Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about my favourites from each house. I'm going to talk through 15 different houses and I'm going to tell you if I own something from that house, which one of the ones that I own is my favourite. But I'm also going to tell you which one I'm most interested in either purchasing or trying if I haven't tried it. So this is actually a tag video and I was tagged by Bolage from a fragrance channel, I guess. So if you haven't seen me before, I'm Claire Smith. I make videos all about perfume, perfume science, perfume history, perfume psychology even. And I also just do some straight perfume reviews and some fun tags. So if that kind of thing interests you, then please do consider subscribing. And also please like this video if you do end up liking this video. So because this is a tag video, I'm also going to tag a few people to do this video as well. And of course, anybody is welcome to do this. But I'm going to specifically tag John from Scented Snowdrops. I'm also going to tag Fragrances with Filson. And I'm also going to tag Veronica from Veronica Says. I just think it'd be really interested to hear which fragrances those people would all choose from their own collections. So let's get on with this. So the first fragrance house I'm going to talk about is going to be Chanel. Chanel are a fragrance house that I just didn't really understand when I first started my channel. I didn't get people's love for Chanel at all. And it's really only something that's come to me through trying their fragrances a lot more and trying them repeatedly, even just the same fragrances over and over again. And now I see the beauty in them. There are still some that I just don't get on with. Um, I still don't really love Chanel number no. five. I can appreciate it's a good fragrance, but it's just not one for me. If I choose a fragrance for my own collection, it, this is a really easy choice because I only have one Chanel fragrance. And this is one that was gifted to me by Francis at Happiness Sparkles. And this one is Coco Mademoiselle. And this fragrance I really do enjoy. And it's one that I wear to work when I want to feel sorted, when I want to feel like I know what I'm doing when I want some kind of confidence boost. So it really occupies a very particular niche and need in my fragrance wearing life. But I think, you know, if I didn't have that one, which one would I choose? Well, I really like the intense blanket of Coco Mademoiselle, but I think considering I have Coco Mademoiselle, I probably wouldn't choose that one as an additional one. I also really like Coco. So Coco is something that I repeatedly go and try in store and I'm actually really surprised that I really like Coco quite so much because it's quite a clove dominant fragrance, at least in the beginning of it. And cloves are something that I can I really struggle with in food. I, they can really ruin a meal for me. So I'm really quite surprised that I like that fragrance quite so much. But I think it's the far dry down that's the bit that I really crave with that fragrance. From the more expensive lines, I really like Venise from the Les Eaux line. But that fragrance is just so fleeting that I don't think it's worth its price point. But that's a very sweet and powdery fragrance again. I just think that's their speciality, really. From the really, really expensive line, I'd probably choose Mizia. I've tried uh, Boy, I've tried Beige, and I've tried Le Lion. And I would say that Mizia is probably my favourite out of the ones that I've tried. Again, that's a very powdery fragrance. So I think, yeah, because of the massive price difference between those different collections, I'd probably just go with Coco. I think that that's, that's about as much as I'd want to spend on a Chanel fragrance. So the second fragrance house is Dior. So the ones in my own collection that I have from Dior are the Miss Dior 2012 and uh, Dior's J'adore. Both of these I, I quite like. This one I, I really like. It's basically more of a rosy version of uh, Coco Mademoiselle. They're very, very similar to me. This one is one I, I struggle with a little bit. This one's quite a watery, fru watery fruits and watery florals kind of fragrance. So out of those two, I'd probably choose the 2012 version of Miss Dior. But I think really the one that I would choose if I were to go out and buy a new one would be Dior Pure Poison. That's the one that really attracts me. And that's the one that I repeatedly go and try. So I think that's probably the one I should choose. So that one's kind of a very white floral fragrance. It feels almost ghostly to me. So yeah, Pure Poison would be the one that I would choose from Dior, um, from the main line. I do also like Addict though. That's a lovely, very green feeling kind of vanilla fragrance. From the more expensive Dior line, I think that I really like Jasmine Des Anges the best. That's one I own already. So I can't really pick that one as one that I would get. But yeah, that's that's just a really nice, uplifting, very happy kind of fruity jasmine fragrance. Very summery, very girly. Just makes me feel pretty. So if I were to choose another one from that line, I think one that I haven't tried but I would really like to try would be Vanilla Diorama. But I have also tried Oud Rosewood and Rouge Trafalgar and I really like those two as well. So yeah, I think overall I would probably choose 
pure poison. So the next house I'm going to choose one from is YSL. YSL are a house that I just haven't loved recently, but I did used to really enjoy wearing black opium and black opium is probably the one that I would choose for my own collection. So black opium is a, is a fragrance that people just love to hate now, isn't it? It's, it's one of those that's been out a long time. It's been out 10 years and it's something that is just quite sweet and quite a lot if you're in a confined space. I still do think it's a really good fragrance. I think it's well constructed and I think it's very different to what what was on the market at the time. So Black Opium would be my choice, but I also have uh, Black Opium Intense, which I just don't think is as nice as, as Black Opium is. I think this one is just a, a custody vanilla really in the dry down. And I think that's what's a little bit disappointing about it. It doesn't really have the Black Opium DNA enough for me to be able to call this intense. I just don't think that really works for me. I also have Reef Gauche. This is a very nearly empty bottle that my mum gave me because my mum wears this, this as her signature fragrance and it's kind of nice to have something as, as a, a reference point, isn't it, to sniff? But yeah, this, this one would never be for me, this one, because it's my mum's fragrance. Another one that I have that I've bought very recently is YSL Cinema and this is a vintage bottle. I was looking for the vintage formulation of this fragrance because it has been reformulated. And this one is an almondy, very deep vanilla, but it also has a fruitiness about it. And I do really like this, but I just haven't tried it enough to know that I would choose it for sure over Black Opium, but I am really enjoying this one. So that's YSL Cinema. I think out of the main line, there isn't really a YSL fragrance that would attract me. I'm not really interested in, in Libre. I, I've tried it and it's okay. I prefer the EDP over the flankers, but that's about as far as it goes with Leap. I also am not that bothered by Montpourri. It's very pretty. It's a very nice, pleasant, fruity floral, but it's just not, it doesn't excite me, I, I guess is, is the point. I think out of their more expensive line, I would probably choose Kaftan, which would be a, a blind buy. I would never blind buy a fragrance that expensive, but if I were choosing one for this video, I would probably go for Kaftan. I think that's probably the most likely one that I would enjoy. So Kaftan is meant to be an incense -y, leathery, ambery fragrance. And I just think I like those kind of notes in fragrance. So yeah, I think overall, because I just don't like most of the main line from YSL, I don't want another Black Opium Flanker. I think I would choose Kaftan from YSL, which is it's so dodgy because I haven't even tried it. So yeah, I just like the idea of it. So the next house I'm going to choose one from is Tom Ford and Tom Ford are a fragrance house that I have four fragrances from. I have three from the Orchid line. So I have uh, Black Orchid, Orchid Soleil and Velvet Orchid. And I also have uh, Noir Pour Femme from the Noir line. I think out of the four fragrances that I own from Tom Ford, my favourite is between these two. It's between Orchid Soleil and Black Orchid. And I think at the moment my favourite is Black Orchid. But I think Black Orchid has been reformulated now, so I'm not sure I would buy it again, actually. I, I need to go and try it in store and see how different it is, really. I just noticed that I thought it smelled quite different now. So, yeah, I, ha I don't have anything from the private line, but I think if I were to go buy one now, I probably would choose something from the private line. But I can't say that most of them excite me, actually. I have some dupes of some clones of Lost Cherry. I do like Lost Cherry. But it, it's, it, doesn't have, it doesn't have something that excites me, Lost Cherry. It's delicious, but it doesn't excite me. The one that really does excite me, I think, is Noir de Noir. I think that one just has a lot, of, a lot of a story about it. It's very mysterious. It's very deep. It's almost chocolatey. It's, it's just a very beautiful rose patchouli fragrance. And it just smells a little bit vampiric almost even. So yeah, I think I would buy Noir de Noir if I had to choose one from Tom Ford. So next I'm going to choose one from Miller Harris. And I have three fragrances from Miller Harris. I have Found at Dusk. I have Etui Noir. And I have Violet Ida. So out of the three, I think my favourite really hands down just has to be Found at Dusk. That was the first one that I bought the first one that really made me think that Miller Harris were a house for me. And it's just a beautiful black currant, green, herbal smelling, woody kind of fragrance. Very much like a damp garden to me. It sort of brings back childhood memories. It's just definitely the one that I think I'd have to choose out of the three. Even though I do really like the other two as well. 
I think from the fragrances that I haven't got in my collection, I, I haven't really tried many Miller Harris's more than just one spray and shop. They're quite rare to find in shops actually to be able to try. I think I've only seen them once ever. And I did try the entire range while I was there, but obviously, you know, trying them all at once, it's, it's not a good way to sample, is it? I think really the one that I would love to, to try that I haven't tried is Tender from the range that came out at the same time as Scurzo. That one gets no hype whatsoever, but that one has an ink note and I just would really love to try that. I just think that sounds really interesting. The other one that I would really love to try would be Leather Rouge. I've just heard so many good reports about that fragrance and I just really love leather and fragrances and it's with raspberry, which is one of my favourite fruity notes to go with, with leather. And I just think that would be a really nice fragrance to try. So yeah, out of the ones that I haven't got in my collection and really that I haven't tried, I would choose Leather Rouge. So the next fragrance house I'm going to choose for is Galan. I have five Galan fragrances in my collection and those are Ma Petite Robe Noir Plissé, Ma Petite Robe Noir Black Perfecto. I also have Coconut Fizz and I also have Mongolin and also Insolence, the EDP of Insolence. I really love all five of those fragrances, but I think the one that I would choose for my collection would be La Petite Robe Noir Black Perfecto. This one has now been reformulated, sadly, I think, but this fragrance for me is just, it just feels like me. This one is leather, it's rose, it's powdery, it's also got licorice and it's also got cherry and it's just so, mm, I just, I just really think this one suits me and it's also a little bit musky as well, which is just, it's ticking all those boxes for me and this is definitely the one that I would choose from those five. But if I were to choose a fragrance from Galan that I don't own, I'd probably stick with the Ma Petite Robe Noir uh, line. I think I just really like that line. It's really fun, it's reasonably priced and the one that I would want to try from that line would be the Intense version. That one, the Blueberry, the, uh, the Blueberry fragrance, I think is the one that I would really like to sample. I think it would probably be too sweet for me, but that's the one that really intrigues me. That's the one that I've always wanted to try and I've never seen it anywhere to try it. So yeah, La Petite Robe Noir Intense would be the one that I would choose. So next, an unexpected one, I'm gonna choose a fragrance from Givenchy. So Givenchy are a fragrance house that I've only ever owned one fragrance from and I ended up decluttering it. I used to own Givenchy Very Irresistible Intense, I think. And that one I decluttered because to me it smelled like bourbon whiskey and a powdery rose, but it was kind of dusty smelling to me. And it, it just, I don't know, there was something about it. On paper, I just should have loved it. It should have been a fragrance for me, but I just didn't love it on me. Really the one that I would choose would be one from the Lontidy line. I've been trying a lot of the Lontidy line recently. And I really like the Jasmine one. I also really like the Rouge and I really like the Intense. And I'm really split on which one I should get from this line. And I really do think I will be getting one from this line eventually. It's just a question of which. The one that I'm really finding to be my favorite at the moment is really Rouge. I think Rouge would be the one that I would choose. And I, I sprayed that one on paper. And I remember I came back to it after I'd been on holiday, after, after 10 days of it, of having sprayed it on this paper. And I could still smell this beautiful kind of, almost sort of slightly spiced, hot vanilla on this paper. I don't think vanilla is even listed, but it's definitely in that fragrance. It's, that's what you're left with after that length of time on the paper. And yeah, I just really love the fragrance throughout. I love that kind of spiciness in it. I really love the tuberose and I just really love the kind of the creaminess to it. It's And it's just so strong. It's, it's one that just lasts and lasts and lasts. And it's something that's just so distinctive. So yeah, I think the Rouge will probably be my choice, but it could be the Intense. I really love the Sesame in that, in that fragrance as well. And I really like the lightness of the Jasmine one, the Nocturnal Jasmine one. So yeah, it would be something from Lonsdy, probably the Rouge. So next is Moogler. I do have a lot of fragrances from Moogler because I went a bit Moogler crazy when I first started my YouTube channel. I just got really into them. I'd not really tried many of them and I just got hooked. There was something about the DNA of that house that was exciting and different. And I don't think that's really the case anymore, sadly. So I think with Moogler, my first fragrance from them was Aura. And that's really the one that got me hooked. I also had around the same time, I had Womanity and I finished Womanity. 
And then I also had a lot of the aliens and alien flankers. So I had uh, O Extraordinaire, which I finished. I still do have some Mirage. Uh, alien Essence Absolute, uh, the original Alien. I've got the vintage version and the more modern version. And then I also have Angel, Angel Nova, O Crozier 2020. And I also have Angel Muse. And then I also have one called Oda Star, which is I think is pretty rare now. So I think out of these, I'd probably be quite boring. And I'd probably go for either the Vintage Alien or Alien Essence Absolute, because these are the two that I had to hunt for. These are the two that I just really love. And there's something just in the dry down of these fragrances that is just intoxicating and just makes me want to smell more of it. But I know that I've got a very limited amount of both of those fragrances, which is, is really upsetting. But... Yes, I'd probably give up the rest of my collection of Moogle fragrances just to have those two. Yeah, if I have to pick one, I'm going with Vintage Alien. I just think that one that one just gets me. That one's the more wearable of the two. And that's the one that I want to wear all day, every day. So yeah, Vintage Alien. I think if I were to choose a fragrance from Moogle now to, to purchase, I would really struggle. Because they've just discontinued most of them. And the ones that they haven't discontinued they've reformulated and the newer ones that they've brought out are just really not that exciting anymore so you know they've reformulated angel they've reformulated alien and they've also brought out angel elixir which just didn't interest me in the slightest and then they just have alien goddess left so i think with alien goddess i'd probably choose the intense out of the three but i think that's probably the, my favorite out of the three but again i don't think i'd really want that in my collection i don't feel like i need one so yeah i think with Mugla, it's probably going to be the first case of me saying that i don't actually want another fragrance of their current collection which is is quite shocking actually so yeah nothing from Mugla for me so the next fragrance house is lancome and lancome are a fragrance house that i have a very mixed feeling about sometimes I just think they're a bit dull and other times they really get me and I really get hooked on their fragrances so I've tried quite a few from Lancome actually and I've finished quite a few so I've finished a couple of minis of La Via Belle that one's definitely not for me I feel like La Via Belle was just something that I smell absolutely everywhere and yeah I just I, I decluttered a bigger bottle of La Via Belle because I just couldn't I couldn't face the thought of using that much of Livia Bell is just quite strong and quite overpowering. The flanker, though, of Livia Bell, the Le Clair, that was absolutely one of my favourite fragrances last year. I wore this one quite a lot in the beginning half of this year before I used this one up. And yeah, I would say that Livia Bell Le Clair, if they were still making this, I would be trying to buy another bottle. I, I have a, a clone oil now, so that's kind of replaced it for me. But the thing I loved about this was the far dry down and I, that's the bit that I found addictive. I've also finished a few other fragrances from Lancome, uh, both of which weren't really for me. So I finished Miracle, which was probably the better of the two for me. A little bit fresher. It's kind of like a crisp white shirt kind of fragrance. It's got a little bit of a spiciness to it, but really it's just, yeah, a very fresh kind of fragrance, Miracle. And I also finished this little mini of a Trezor. This is a vintage bottle of Trezor that was given to me by the Fragrantician. Again, this is, you know, a powdery, peachy kind of fragrance. It's just not my jam, really. But it was interesting to try it. And I really thought that the musk in this fragrance was very distinctive. And that was interesting about it. I think Trezor is quite famous for that first use of that um, galaxolide musk, actually. And that's really what I got in very heavy dose with this fragrance. I think the one that I would choose from Lancome that I that I really did love is going to be between this one, which is uh, Lanoui Trésor, Musque Diamant, and Le Vie Belle, Le Clare. These two are really my favourites, and I think I'd probably go with I probably go with Le Clare actually. I think that really was my favourite out of them. So yeah, that's the one I'd probably choose. I think if I were going to choose a Lancome fragrance now, there's not really anything from the main line that really excites me and makes me want to jump up and buy it and I think I'll probably go to the the Grand Cru line the more expensive line but again with that with that fragrance line I feel like they've discontinued all the ones that I probably would have really enjoyed like Irish Dragé and also La Vente I think that's just a real shame actually with that line and really the only one that I've tried from that line is Jasmine's Mazupan 
um, but I don't really remember how it smelled. I just remember it being sweet and I remember it being jasmine, but that, that's really about as far as it goes. So I don't really feel like I could choose one from Lancome. So I'm going to leave it there because I just don't know. So the next house I'm going to choose one from is going to be Gucci and Gucci are a house that I don't have many from. I've had a few fragrances that I finished up. So I finished, I finished Gucci Guilty EDT, but there wasn't much in this bottle. So I didn't really experience it much, but from what I spelt of this, I didn't really enjoy it that much. I also finished a bottle of Gucci Rush and I sold my other bottle of Gucci Rush because I realized that I would never want to use it after getting through this one. This one sort of it warmed on me. It became something that I could tolerate more, but I can't ever say that I really enjoyed this fragrance, but I could see that it was a very different fragrance. That's how I put it. It's a different fragrance. I think really for me, the two that in my collection I really do like, and out of the two, out of um, Gucci Guilty Absolute Parfum and uh, Gucci Bloom Nettari de Fiore, I'd probably choose Nettari de, de Fiore. This one is just sort of something that smells kind of fizzy to me. It's a fizzy tuberose fragrance. And it also has a bit of an indolic touch to me. This smells almost like it's cheesy to me. And I kind of like that. It sounds weird, but yeah, it's something that just really attracts me, this one. It just smells like a very natural fragrance to me, this one. And I think that's why I like it quite so much. I think if I were going to go and choose a Gucci fragrance now, I would really struggle. The one that I really was interested in has been discontinued. So that was Gucci Guilty Love Edition, the pink one. That one I really wanted to try. So that's supposed to be a really powdery, violety, makeup-y kind of fragrance. And I thought that one sounded like it would be quite nice, but they've discontinued it. So I will never get to try that now. I think with the modern Gucci Flora line, that just doesn't really interest me. I've tried all three of those. And I can't say any of them grabbed me. I don't think I'd want any of those in my collection. Really, if I were going to choose one from the Gucci line, I'd probably go to the Alchemist line, the more expensive line. But again, I'm not sure I would I would spend that much money on one fragrance. But I, I did like some of those. So yeah, I probably don't know what I'd choose from Gucci. So the next house I'm going to talk about is Marc Jacobs. So Marc Jacobs is a house that I think is quite a beginner house. I think that's something of my time. When I was younger, Marc Jacobs were just everywhere and they were something that was really popular with the Daisy line and with Decadence. And it's just something that I, I, I got into before I started my channel. And really, since I started my channel, I've just lost interest in Marc Jacobs, I would say. So the ones that I've had in my collection are um, Daisy, which I've finished. I've also finished Daisy Dream, Daisy Days Left, which is one that my mum gave me a few years ago. Mark Jacobs by Mark Jacobs and I also have Lola which is something that I've worn for a long time as well as Decadence the classic and also Osa Decadent. I think out of all of these I would probably choose Lola because Lola is a fragrance that just makes me think of me in my 20s and that just has these really good positive memories for me. And it's something that just evokes those times for me. So that's really the reason that I would choose Lola. Lola is actually quite an unfriendly fragrance. I think most people don't like it. It's, it, it starts off with really strong grapefruit and then it's a peppery rose fragrance really from then on. But yeah, it's got sort of similarities with, with Lush's Rose Jam. I think, I think that's probably the closest thing that I could equate for that. But Lush's Rose Jam is a lot sweeter, a lot more inviting. I think from Marc Jacobs offerings nowadays, I'd really struggle to pick one because I'm not really sure that I like the perfect line enough to want to bring one home with me. The original EDP is probably my favourite out of the three. I think the Intense is just a little bit too strong for me, maybe. But and I think the EDT is a little bit too soapy for, for me. But the original EDP, I also feel like it could be a Daisy Flanker and no one would no one would blink really if you called it Daisy Perfect. I also think that the Daisy Intense is, is not something that really attracts me. And actually the Daisy Flankers recently, the, the new lines of those, they haven't really attracted me either. So I'm not really sure what I would choose. But if I had to choose one, I'd probably choose Perfect EDP, I think, from Marc Jacobs. Yeah, I'm going to choose that one. So the next house I'm going to choose from is Jean-Paul Gaultier. And I only own two fragrances from Jean-Paul Gaultier. I have... 
Scandal by Night, and I also have a Classique, a little EDT mini of Classique. I think out of these two, I really do like both of them, and I would struggle to choose one or the other. I don't really wear either of them that often, and I feel like the reason I don't wear Classique very much is because it's not a spray. I feel like if I had this in a spray, I would probably go for this one, actually. So this one smells a bit like Nag Champa to me. I think that's really why I like it. But I'm not sure whether it's been reformulated in the meantime or whether the EDT is even still available. So yeah, I'd probably go with this one because I think this would be the harder fragrance to, to find. But I do think this syrupy cherry fragrance as well is just gorgeous. And it's something that I really should wear more because, yeah, it, it's stunning. It's a really nice sweet fragrance. And I don't really like really super sweet fragrances that much. And I still like this one. I think nowadays with Jean-Paul Gaultier, I'd really struggle to choose one because I don't really enjoy La Belle and that line just is just a no for me. That one was so hyped on YouTube, wasn't it? But just don't jive with it. I think really from the rest of the Scandal line, nothing really excites me. The classic flankers have kind of died a death as well. I think really... I'd probably go for the men's line. I'd probably go for something like Le Beau. I feel like Le Beau is a really nice fragrance, actually. It's a coconut vanilla fragrance. And they brought out Le Beau Par Le Parfum. And that one has pineapple in it. But I think that I like Le Beau EDT a little bit more. It's a little bit fresher. Yeah, I'd, cho I'd choose Le Beau EDT, I think. So the next house is Kaali, And Kaali are a house that are really quite prolific in their releases. They're releasing two or three fragrances a year. And they have been doing for, what, three, four years now. They've been around since 2018, I think. I've released a, a video talking about Kaali and why I think they're successful as a fragrance house. I'll leave that link down below. If you haven't seen it, it's a good watch. It's got loads of information about how it started and about the creator of that house. With Kaali, I do have a few. And I do like all of the ones that I have now. So I have Pink Pepper and Vanilla Cocoa as an oil. I have Invite Only Amber as a little mini. I have the Vanilla. Of course, I have the Vanilla. And I also have the Love First Burning Cherry. And I think really out of these four, the two that I like the most are probably Love Fest and also Invite Only. Um, I can't say I wear either of these two very much. I, I wore this one a bit back in sort of March this year. I've only, I've only had it a few months, this one. Um, and this one I have worn, but I, I can't say that you need very much of it because it's very, very strong. I think really, for me, it's going to be this one. Because I think Invite Only Amber is a little bit more grown up than Love Fest. Love Fest is like the fun flirty one, the younger one, and then Invite Only is the sort of the more the more mature one that you have to watch out for really. Invite Only Amber is a little bit boozy, it's got cherry, it's got tobacco, it's a cool smelling amber as well. Those are things that I, I just really love in fragrance and yeah I don't really have anything else like this in my collection and that's why I'm choosing that one but I do also really like Love Fest. And it, it was really close between these two. These two are pretty related, actually. They smell like they could be cousins, almost. If I were to choose another one from Kaali, I've, I've tried the pistachio one. I've tried the sugared patchouli one. I haven't tried the two most recent ones, the Santal ones. But I can't say that from reading reviews of them and reading about them, they really excite me that much. They're just not something that I really am running out to try. The pistachio one I felt was a little bit underwhelming. I've only tried it once though, so maybe I'm just not seeing the joy in it. I feel like I felt like that with the musk. And then I, when I smelt it a bit more and got to understand it a bit more, it really stood out as something that was nice. The one that I would choose would be to have the oils that I have. So the pink pepper and the vanilla cocoa or cocoa vanille. I never know which way around the, the names are. I would choose these, but as a spray, because I feel like the oils, they smell very different to the sprays and I feel like the sprays are much nicer actually so yeah I'd probably choose the pink pepper as a spray I think if I were going to choose a, another Kaali to buy and the final house I'm going to talk about is Hermes so Hermes is a fragrance house that I've only really discovered in the last year I've only really been trying their fragrances in the last year and I got really obsessed with the Eau de Merveille line and I wanted one and I couldn't decide and eventually I went for Ombre de Merve, which is kind of a, a dark, smoky tea fragrance. It's a bit like a, a very flat, 
but very spicy cola. So that one I have from Hermes. And I also have Le Jardin de Monsoli, which I think is a fragrance that isn't entirely me. I, I get why I bought it because it's kind of got that green watery freshness. It is, it is a very kind of summery, sappy, green kind of very fresh watery fragrance. But I'm just not entirely sure this one's me. So I think I would choose out of the two, I would choose Ombre de Merve as a, just because it's more me. I think if I were to choose a Hermes to, to buy now, I would probably have to go for something I haven't tried because that's the one that really interests me that I just am desperate to try, but I can't find it anywhere. And that one's Kalesh, the EDP. So that one's a powdery leather fragrance. I, I mean, I don't know. I haven't tried it, but apparently it's powdery leathery fragrance and it's got loads of floral notes. It's got rose, it's got violet and it's got mimosa. And I think that's really something that I could really enjoy, but I'm, you know, obviously I've never tried it, so I don't know. So that's the final fragrance in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, then please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And please let me know, are there any particular houses that you really, really love and have a lot of fragrances from? Or are there any fragrance houses that you think they're just not for me? I'd be really interested to know. So please let me know down below. And also thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.